My name is João Palma. I am a researcher and also a farmer at MVARC, Munich de Vento Agroecology Research Center, which is uh, on the southeast of Portugal. I'm Jo Smith. I'm a researcher focusing on agroforestry systems. I was working in the UK for 10 years um, in organic systems and last five years I've been based here in Portugal, southern Portugal, working for MVARC. MVARC was the creation of Joao, um, so looking for a different path out of academia, something much more applied. So based here on the farm we can investigate ideas actually in the field, um, having, having, having the control of the, the land management we can set up different trials, try out different new, different ideas, new ideas, um, and be a bit more independent. The climate here is characterized by a typical Mediterranean climate with very dry summers, about sometimes six to eight months without rain. In the last 15 years, it was about 300 millimeters of rain. So it's a dry, semi-arid, almost arid environment and we have to cope with it uh, with uh, harsh climates and also not so fertile soils, let's say. This land has been used as uh, natural grassland or improved grassland for grazing, mostly sheep and more lately cattle. We also have some, some pigs. When the region of Mertula is the capital of hunting in, in Portugal. So the farm here at MV Arc is an agroforestry farm. Um, so we have trees, uh, the pine trees, and they're arranged with an alley in between, uh, which at the moment we're investigating in terms of um, harvesting the, the cistus, the rock rose, but can also be used for livestock. So farmers locally, they integrate livestock into the system, the livestock graze the understory, the grass. Sometimes they also grow crops in the alleys as well, and the trees help buffer those crops from the extreme temperatures of this area. Being a harsh environment, there are not many agricultural products that grow, you know, uh, healthy and unsupported. But there is one interesting plant called Esteva in Portuguese, a rock rose in English, the shrub um, has been used traditionally um, in the past and has been, uh, has been exploited by, by, some, by locals as well. There's some harvesting and produce, production of essential oil and it's successful on this harsh environment. So it's an endogenous species, a native species. If you don't think as a weed, it has very high productivity. If you think as a weed, it's a very huge problem. But if you turn the soil every four or five years, which is the business as usual, this shrub will always come with no irrigation, no fertilization, has natural regeneration. It has beautiful flowers. Uh, so for other people in this area, the locals of this area, you know, it signifies spring to them. They love the flowers and, and the landscape in the spring. We started some years ago, instead of killing the shrub, pruning the shrub, like having a coppice, to see if it would regrowth. Um, and we found out that, of, yes, it regrows even better. So we started to do something which is opposite to, or the opposite to uh, what, others, what are others doing, which is people are killing the shrub every period of four or five years, and we're actually promoting the growth. Why are we promoting the growth? Because this shrub is also aromatic and there's been traditional uses of the shrub in the past as medicinal, as uh, beauty, cosmetic and has the potential to be uh, for extraction of essential oil. So there's a market for it. And we thought about, okay, instead of killing, let's try to make a product out of it. And we started to promote its growth.
So it all starts with uh, recovering all shrubland, adult shrubs. And then you cut them at about 30 centimeters. Then you harvest in the mornings, distilled in the afternoons, and then you produce the oil, essential oil and hydrolate. And then you let it grow for two years, three years. Environmentally speaking, there's a whole range of benefits of not tilling the soil and uh, preserving uh, the, the, the above ground and be the below ground. On the product side, you have essential oil, which is very uh, known, antimicrobial, antifungical, and the, it's used in the cosmetics industry. And also the hydrolate, which is a sub-product, which is also beneficial. It's, it's underutilized, has beneficial properties also on the cosmetic industry as an anti-wrinkle and as an as a antibiotic as well. And it's, the, in my opinion, the key of success for making the project financially viable. We believe it's not just a carbon neutral product, but it's a carbon negative by combining it with trees. So the trees are locking up carbon um, in their biomass and also in, increasing carbon in the soil, uh, which can offset any emissions that we create from harvesting the rock rose. Um, so actually, instead of just being carbon neutral, it's a carbon negative product. There's a boiler here of 1,000 liters. The idea is to keep the water boiling with pressure. You know, at the moment we're, we're harvesting the shrub, we're bringing it here, distilling, taking the essential oil, the hydrolate, but then we still have this biomass that's left and that has a value as well. You know, that's where my interest as a researcher comes in. It's like, what could we do to make a value of this biomass? It could actually potentially be used for animal feed. So goats eat the fresh biomass. Obviously, it's also organic matter, so we can compost it, we can return it to the field and improve um, soil health. <laughs> And finally, it's, it's also a good source of bioenergy. So, um, you know, potentially making it into briquettes, which we can then 
burn in the boiler to feed the process of distillation or even you know bigger scale than that so replacing kind of wood chips or, or sawdust in terms of um, heating houses and so on. I mean there's interest from farmers here these are farmers who are already almost on a regenerative path they're already open to new ideas but they want to see it working before they commit because you know there is an investment needed it's investment in the distillery equipment, in the harvesting equipment. It's not about making lots of money, it's can we have a different approach to land management here? The challenge here, how can we work together to make this shrub uh, recognised as a crop, like for example rosemary is, or thyme, or lavender is. If this crop would be recognised as a crop and people would get same level as subsidies as other crops, more farmers would be actually implementing this, this cropping system, this management of the shrub. There is demand for essential oil, but there is an underutilized product, which is the hydrolate. Hydrolate is, um, has interesting characteristics, interesting usage, but the value chain is not yet there. Um, so it needs to be worked, worked out. The value of hydrolate, it's very simple. In, in 100 kilos, you produce maybe 50 milliliters of oil, but you produce 100 uh, liters of hydrolate. So in terms of product value, in terms of um, delivery, you have much more volume of hydrolate than oil. The hydrolate has interesting properties. It's uh, astringent. I use it as an aftershave every day. You can use for beautiness, you can use to shiny hair, uh, for skin problems. There's lots of cosmetics applications. One of the key challenges going forward is, is identifying a market for the new products. So the essential oil is well known um, and people buy that um, and it has a good value, but it's such a small part of the production and the hydrolate is one of the major outputs of the, of the production system. But as yet, we don't have um, a big market for it. Um, and, and so we need to work with potential industries that could use it. And that's not just cosmetics. It could be um, companies that make um, biological alternatives to agri agrochemicals. So either for, um, for plant protection products um, or for fertilizer for the soil. Um, another option would be using it for cleaning products, um, so for more natural natural based cleaning products but it all takes time and development and money um, but it's kind of exciting you know that's that's the challenge for us now to build that up and to make the system work really financially um, and to demonstrate to others that, that that could be a major part of it. Why shouldn't we be recognized as well as a farmer harvesting a crop like we are doing? 